thought of my life was kind of rough, I had an awful battle. The doctor set my parents down and said my life was fragile. Perspective is the game, I guarantee the name. Just put your head down, do the work, and everything will change. Sipping tea, helping feels, yeah, that's what I wanted. Being patient, hella tricky, if I'm being honest. See what Gary V puts in positivity. New intro life. New intro life on Tea with Gary V. Super excited to be here. Um, yeah, new camera, looking down a little bit more. So uh, bear with I, us on that. I had to come in for a sec because it's yep. like the feed's coming in a little wrinkly. Is it? Yeah. What um, do you mean? It's. I think it's. I think it's just your internet connection. From. I mean, it's always the same. So you mean like it's um, it's just blurry. Yeah. You want to switch over to the other let mic? Me, let me see what happens here. Okay. I guess I could ask the people in the comments. Eh, it's not blurry for them. All right, whatever. Really? Because I I think no I think people are saying, some people are saying spotty. Let's see. That's better. Yeah, it is clearing up now. Is it? Yeah. Looks good. You're fine. Right? I mean, I guess well, just... if it gets bad, I'll just come back in again and just switch the camera or something. All right. Looks good. It's blur. Maybe it's blurry on some platforms. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the comments might be coming in delayed, so it's they might be seeing the blurry yeah, before. Let's we'll just fucking go. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Let's go into the show. Hi, Gary. Hey, Michelle. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Um, Michelle. Of course. I am the founder of Hello Fears, which is a community made out of non-conformists, so people who want more out of life. And after leading this community for the last five years, I launched my first book called Hello Fears only two weeks ago. And I have already, thank you. So I've already sold over 4,000 books, which is pretty cool, taking into account that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but I love to see this book take off beyond my followers. And I've seen how powerful the content is based on the success of my speaking career. And the feedback, feedback from my community has been overwhelmingly positive. So I believe so much in it that I feel I haven't been able to do justice to it. So I think that if I can get the right influencers to support this message, then the impact could be huge. And I'd love to know what would you recommend? What are some of the ways to have influencers interested in our products? So maybe it's only a matter of time, but I don't want to leave this to chance. I actually want to go and grab it. Yeah, so I, I don't know if, you know, I think a lot of people view, first of all, congratulations, that's a lot of books in a short period of time. I, I think a lot of people want to rely on influencers, but, you know, influencers can and do move books, but I think a lot of time is spent on it. Plus, the reality is influencers want to be compensated. Mm -hmm. You know, there's two ways to do it. There's the transactional way and then there's the authentic way. The authentic way is it naturally gets its own steam. One person passes it on, recommends it, and away it goes. You can, you can market that um, by over-investing in influencers and paying them to post. There's a level of transaction that eliminates the authenticity of that shout out. My belief is that the number one way to really get books out is through access. And what I mean by that is going to that community that bought 4,000 and said, look, I'm going to do a five hour Q and a live stream, but you have to buy 15 copies of the book. You have to submit your receipt from Amazon that you bought 15 copies and then that will be your pass in. And then you have to give away those 15 copies to friends and family. Now what you're doing is you're taking your people that actually care, that actually value you and you're making them part of the overall team. Right. And you're, you're spreading it with a more authentic way. I, I think that influencer marketing is one of the best you know, ways to market. However, people are too ideological about it. Like, you know, you, you're going to need to, you know, either pay or, or have it happen authentically. 
Yeah, no, I definitely don't want to pay. I want, I know that if the right influencers look at this book, like with the right audience, they will want to share it. So it's a matter of it's So it's, then it's just a matter of just sending them the you're paying in a different way. You're sending them the book and then you're hoping that they actually share it. But it's hard because um, I think the hardest part right now is that because we're in a pandemic and we're home, people are not at their offices. If you ask influencers for their address, they don't want to give you their home address. They just want to give you their um, you office. Box. Yeah, and they're not there. So I've been sending it to- I think, I, think, I think that's an excuse. Like influencers are getting unlimited products sent to their PO boxes and offices and having it delivered. I think that if you called and said, I've got $5,000 for you, where would you like me to send it? If you post and review this, miraculously, their office is gonna be fucking open. I think that's people, I think that's an excuse that you're making that excuse and they're making that excuse mm -hmm. because most most people don't want to, you know, post about things without naturally feeling it or being compensated for it. So I also think it comes down to how many influencers have you asked or reached out to, you know? And what about how hard it is to reach an influencer nowadays? Uh, for example, if they don't use Instagram, like some in influencers are very active and I, and you know, they would look at their DMs, but some, for example, Brenna Brown, she's not really on Instagram. Um, so she's really hard to get in that way. Is there any? I mean, look, here, here's where audacity takes over, right? Where you need to be careful. You know, if you want Brene Brown to shout out your book, it shouldn't be as easy as you know, hey, shout out my book. You know, I, I, I think that you, you send her a copy with a nice letter to whatever address you can find that the letter is your only prayer of getting her to do it. Um, or you DM her or you hit her up on LinkedIn. I mean, it's, it's just asking, but you have so little leverage in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's 40,000 people trying to get to Brene Brown on a daily basis to promote their product for them with nothing in return for Brene. Definitely, yeah. I mean, just even, even say the sentence. You know, like, I would like you to do this for me. I have nothing to offer you other than I believe this is good, but everybody thinks their baby is the cutest. Everybody thinks their book is the best. Everybody thinks their makeup or course or meditation thing or, or you know, premium product. Everybody thinks that. I know, I know, but I, well, for me, I've seen the success because of my speaking career. Um, of course, and, but people uh, have seen the success on everything that they've put out. It, whether you're right or wrong, the, the relationship between getting somebody mm -hmm. to give you something of value with nothing in return for them comes out of a couple of places. You've earned it by creating a relationship with them for a long period of time. You got lucky out of the goodness of their heart and they're doing something nice for, just because they feel it. Uh, or the book is naturally good and gets recommended from somebody else and it finds its way to that person. But you know, approaching something with, hey everybody, you know, like I've seen this work because my speaking career is epic and people fucking love it. That comes across as tone deaf. Mm -hmm. So is fucking a million other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just, it's so much work to put into one product. It launches, it's doing really good in that period of time. And then you feel like that's it. Should I continue pushing or should I allow well, time? You, you should definitely keep pushing. You should always push if you want it to be successful. Mm -hmm. Like it's gonna breathe without you even while you're pushing. Those things are happening in parallel. They're yeah. not individual situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels a little bit like postpartum depression. You know, when you push your baby well, out and then. Well, beca because, you know, that obviously that's a different scenario altogether. <laughs> but what, ha what I see with a lot of authors is their expectations. They, people create this narrative in their mind that this book's gonna come out and it's going to become a viral sensation and they're gonna be on the Today Show and every influencer is gonna be posting a copy of it and they're gonna, they're, they're gonna, their fame is gonna explode and they're gonna start making 10 times more speaking and they create all these scenarios without realizing the world's got a million things to look at besides their book. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part, like the expectations, right, of what we put into it. Um, I think so too. I, I think that, listen, it requires micro, you know, 
micro speed and macro patience. On a day to day basis, you have to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Mm-hmm. On on in the real in the real game, I still get to, people tweet me this weekend that they found Crush It and they love it. I wrote that book twelve years ago. Yeah, I love that book. <laughs> well, thank so, you so much for writing it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I look. I think that I think that you need to really think about it. What's in it for the other person? Yeah, that's yeah. the key. Mm-hmm. You know, what's in it for the other person, not what's in it for you, because when people come from what's in it for them, they tend to fall short of what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even honestly looking for me, even though of course this can take my career to the next level. But I just know so many people should be reading this book mostly now it's about facing your fears and becoming who you're meant to be and it's this is the right time to be talking about fear you need to be reaching out to every podcast every every platform you can and 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 getting out there and talking about it whether whether that is a podcast that has 200 listeners or whether it has 3000 listeners you need to be in constant motion and constant promotion mm-hmm. and uh, and and figure it out yeah, definitely. Thank you, awesome. Jerry. Good luck. Take care. Have a <laughs> great day. Yeah, that's that. Let's keep it going. You're on mute, Bella. Oh, hey. shit. Hi. You're good. How Hi. are you? How are you? I'm good. Hi. Thank good. you. Sure. So, um, wow, this is crazy. I've been I've been trying to meet you for like four years. But, Here we um, are. So I'm nice. Um, nice to meet you. I'm so nice to meet I'm you. so nervous. Where are you from? Um, I'm from New York. Awesome. Yeah. So um, my question is, like, how do I stop self doubting myself? Because you're really big on that and um, not caring about what others say because. Can I just give you like a little backdrop? Yeah, please. Okay. So just to make a long story short, I was pregnant at 16 years old. I became a mother. I got emancipated, did whatever I had to do, worked my ass off, put myself through school. And um, a lot of my family's old school and they disowned me. I'm sure you know. You know. Yeah, I get it. So, um, and... I had a I had a great career, but I was still in that relationship with that person because I didn't want to hear my family being like, "Oh, we told you so," or whatever. Because they were all they're all yentas. They all do this. <laughs> they all do of this course. shit. Yep. So, um, it 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 was a really bad relation, like really bad, bad, abusive. Um, if I knew better, I would have done better. But I want to use my experience to help like other women and even men, cause men get abused too. You know, females could pull some shit on some men. So, 100%. I mean, you know, kids and stuff like that. But, um, so I was working in the emergency medical field. I was working in house and I was working on EMS. And the last time, um, my children's father assaulted me, he, he, he basically left me for dead and I was working I thought everything was fine, you know, just bruised up or whatever. And I ended up having a grandma seizure on shift. So I'm um, right there, like my whole career, just fucking gone, done. Because how can how can I take care of anybody? You know what I mean? The seizures weren't under control. So they found out that it was blunt force trauma to the head, what have you. Um, and I just felt so mad, like, like this crazy madness that turned into depression that turned into everything else so to make a long story short i had even started like um i saw you in 2017 you were on like a, a inspirational motivational video with tom bill you and tony robbins and them and i used to watch this video every day every day every day because i was so depressed and it it really did help like save my life so i thank you for that so with my time off of you know i have two I have a 15 year old and 11 year old. Um, I'm out of work. I didn't, I wasn't able to refresh like all my stuff. And um, so I took the time. I was like, you know what? Let me try this life coaching thing. This was like a couple of years ago, but I wanted to do like a live course. So anyways, sorry if I'm talking too fast. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, go ahead. Do your thing. Okay. So um, I had took the life 
um, life coaching course for transformational solution focus. But I'm like, damn, Belle, like, how are you going to do that when you're not there? So I had to like start healing myself. But I've always, with my past line of work, it's it was something in me. Even though whatever was going on at home, when I went to work, you turned on. Man, it it, it was like everything. That was your, nothing. Matters. That was your escape, right? Like that you was, think about you think about a lot of athletes talk about, you know, with all this shit going on. But when I was on the court, I was able to zone in. And 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 by the way, I'm the same way with work. So you were able to. That was like your escape. That was my escape, but it was also so rewarding. Like I, I always had like outstanding service awards and stuff. Like I went beyond. It was beyond. your zone. It was your zone. And you know, I was, I, I worked behavioral health. I, I just, I branched off into so many things, and then it was just like taken like that. So, after you know, I had to go see somebody for depression, and I know like a lot of people are watching this, but it's like my first time really like talking about telling it. somebody I don't know like that. Um. I did, I did make a couple videos on YouTube because I just wanted to use my voice to get it out there because even if there's a 16-year-old girl right this minute that, you know, just found out she's pregnant and her mother's screaming, you know, get out the house, yep. um, maybe it'll help her, you know what I mean, to know not to go until you're 11 years later with this dude, two kids later, and then, you know what I mean, like everything was Of course just I know what wrong. you mean. I, I, one of the things I talk about in a far less crazy scenarios, far less intense scenario, is people don't fire people because they don't want to be wrong in front mm -hmm. of everybody else's eyes. You stayed in this really terrible situation because you didn't want everybody's opinions to be right over you when they were judging you at such a young age. I, it makes, it, this. people live their lives based on other people's opinions. This is like so much of what my you know, framework is to to talk about because I don't want that to be the case because you probably stayed in that god awful relationship for seven years, eight years, nine years too long because you didn't want your mom and grandma and aunt and cousins to be right. But then I'm like, why why do I even care? Because I feel like my mom has put me down since I was young. You know what I mean? Yep. Just because you fed me and and whatever I was born into like bad blood I, I it's just what it is less and, about black, bad blood uh, you were you were born into a situation where based on what you're saying your mom was in a bad place and so misery loves company like misery loves company yeah. doesn't doesn't exclude family it often puts family in the front lines right exactly which I mean that 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 framework probably led to a lot of your decision making in your early teens yeah, because I was trying to get out, like get out of, you know what I mean? Yes, so I do. I, I guess my question is, so yeah, so I was like, okay, you know, let me try, try a public speaking. You know, I had went to a college in Connecticut and spoke about sexual assault and stuff like that on a Take Back the Night. And I had went to a high school and talked to a few upperclassmen. But I, I don't know why I'm like so nervous right now because it's you. Don't be, don't but, be. <laughs> But um, I want to, you know, I'm not in a situation right now where I can go and open up shelters and stuff like that. But that's what I want to do. I'm 40 years old. You know what I mean? So you got I'm 40. Tons of time. I feel like I miss so much time staying stuck, depressed, and all fucked up in my head. It, sorry, I cuss a no, lot. Um, who are you, who you talking Yeah, it's to? you. You know, but listen, I think on the flip side, you have an ungodly amount of time in front of you. Yeah. I mean, you have 50, 60 years in front of you. So the first thing you have to do is- I'm going to live to be no 100 years old. <laughs> why not, Bella? I don't know. You why know, not? I got to think more positive. I really need to think more positive because it's like I'm trying to help other women. Like, I want to go to a shelter. And I was just thinking about this the other day after watching your show. And even like pro bono be like, listen, if there's anybody here that doesn't have insurance or whatever, sometimes- you know, people don't want to talk to counselors and they don't want to talk about what's going on in the house because DCF or CPS or, or the woman's afraid her man's going to beat her ass when he finds out. I, right. I've been it's there. Fear. Of course, you know what you I'm lived saying? It, which is why and, your voice is important because you come from a place of credibility. But I just don't know where to start because I don't let me, let talk me help to you. 
the, I, the place to the place to start is the internet. I know. I just I I was it took me forever to just make that video on like the first time he assaulted me and then I, I got of like course. Comments. it wasn't it wasn't about the video, it was about what you were saying. I mean that's a yeah. deep pain and a very secretive structure. It didn't take you forever because you don't know how to make a video or YouTube is scary. It's what you were saying was scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, and were you, in a, know, you were in a framework for a decade of a fear cocoon that, you know, I mean, you went from one scary place to another scary place. I mean, this is, just, this is, this is your time to finally like really breathe. Like I want to, you know what I mean? But it's like, how do I, how do I network to get out there to, I don't, I feel like shit charging for life coaching. You know I, I understand. Of and then I know it's such a mean. diluted fucking field because you have, and, and, and forgive me, but you have 17, 18 year olds taking a, a over the weekend class and boom. Hey, I know. Listen, if I tell you I've been through some shit, you know, that's good for them to learn. But it was like, I'm like, damn, there's so many life coaches. I don't even know what the fuck to do. So I kind of fell back where I was like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe I'll just go back into the emergency field, but I'm worn out from that field. And then being in the relationship I was in, I started very young. Like I said, you know, when I have two children here, I'm a, sing I'm a single mother. Yeah, like, listen, I'm just listen, Bella, you're 40 going on 90. Who's going to live to 90. So you've got a lot of like, I, I have a lot of compassion for where you're coming from. This all makes a ton of sense to me. Everything feels really true and facts. I think a couple things. One, you can't worry about how many other life coaches there are because that has nothing to do with you. Th right. That will play out. Like, you know, like, you know. That's the, the self-doubt in me. I know it is. That's why I'm bringing it up. Like, that's just, that's not gonna, you're gonna have to keep, the fact that you're starting to put these things out, the fact that you recognize those truths, you're already halfway home. You right. have to understand, a decade ago, you were still in that, five years ago, you're in that cocoon. You're not even in this place. You're in such a great place right now. You need to build on top of this. But the only way you're gonna do it, it's similar to working out. You have to put in the reps. You have to make the content. You can't go and, you know, you're not going to go, you're not, you're not building a clinic yet. You're, you know, right now everything's closed. So you're not going much <laughs> to many places, but what you can do is attack the foundation of putting out content and sharing your mind. You're, you're I one. I want to write a book. That's fine. But start with, start with putting out content. Okay. And I just started to. You have to do it often, a lot and for a period of time, and then you can build on that. You're, you right. know, like, listen, you, you, I think, of, I, I think of life like poker, even though I'm not a poker player, but I do understand what this part is. Some people are handed two aces in their, you know, when they get the first two cards in poker and they lose, right. they miss, they misplay that hand. Right. Other people get a three and a seven offsuit, a shit hand, but they literally figure out how to win that hand. You know, right. you know, clearly taking you for your word and like the story you're telling, like your foundation was maybe, a, 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 you know, a three and a seven off suit, a tough hand. However, the reality is you can win that. You can win that hand. And right now you're at the part where you're starting to really have a foundation to give yourself a chance. What you're going to need to do more than anything else is not think about all the time you wasted. You have to think about all the time you have. Because if you get yourself caught up in all the time you quote unquote wasted, you're gonna become impatient and you're gonna do dumb shit because you're gonna try to make it happen too fast. Right. No, I, 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 I definitely understand that because that's how I was like in 2017. Like I wasn't healed. Like I was, I'm sorry. No worries. Not worried about Jesus a dog. Christ. Dog's um, having fun. He's there. They're living. Can somebody get this, uh, Marley, please? <laughs> Marley, Marley, keep barking. Marley, keep barking. Bella. Mm. Marley Sorry. barking isn't isn't an issue. Marley barking is okay. a good thing. Keep going. So, so um, shit. He just like messed up my whole fucking thinking. Um, your, your whole thinking is a very simple game. I can restart it for you over and over. You had <laughs> you, you had a tough framework, and now you want and. You, you've got all this kind of resentment and worries and, and, uh, and, and you were in this cloud and you're, and you're starting the process now to actually get out of it. 
And the number one thing by a country mile that you have to work on is developing patience in the face of a framework that doesn't look like patience is the answer because you've been wasting so much time. Yet patience is the biggest thing you have to lean into. And what that will then do is allow you to put out content on a daily basis, not overthink it, not hope that every piece of content is gonna be your viral piece of content. And you need to just speak your truth. When you were speaking your truth and here the comments were like in love with that because it's authentic, it's real, and it's something people can associate with. You've gotta put out a lot more of that. I, I, there's, there's much, much more to put out of it. I just wanted I'm to I'm sure ask, you have, un, you have unlimited stories. But the thing is, is that the person that, um, well, he had gotten involved in a high profile thing that maybe after that, when we talk, I can talk to you and tell you, okay. cause it's, you, you know, you know who he is. And, um, it, cause, um, cause the world knows who he is or I know who he is. I, I, they, everybody knows and it, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's it's that's why I stalled because I got depressed and I was like oh now this bitch goes and and does something with a, a famous person so basically he was with a famous person and you go and you know murder somebody and I, I'm like what what the fuck like I was I wasn't gonna put him on blast anyways but I, I kind of felt like damn like, listen, you know why this is this is clearly a deep fucked up situation, right? The reality right, but is, but I started to heal. I'm trying. You're clearly in that place. Like I didn't <laughs> think, you, but really, you're clearly in that place. You just need to look. That's a lot of baggage. And, I can't you know, believe that, I just said that. Oh you know, it's a lot of baggage, but you're clearly you're clearly building on the I next chapter, you. and and you need to keep building on it. You need Thank to put you, stuff Bella. out, Bella. You need to put stuff out. You know, like it's just yeah. it's you got to get it out of your system, both publicly and privately. Like that is the framework. I did the I did the private part. You know, I did get therapy and stuff. I had to. You know, you're, I you you may need to do that forever, and that's okay. That's a strength, not a weakness. I still see a therapist. That's great. But, I'm proud you know, of you. Thank you. Thank like you. That's, that, that's what you should be doing. That's this why I was heavy. so nervous to come on here because I'm like, I, you know, obviously like, you know, close people to me know and stuff, but what also happened at that time when I wanted to, you know, I had a whole bunch of shit set up, but, and, and please anybody watching this, don't get me wrong. But when somebody goes and starts a movement of me too, you know, you, you can't just go back 60 years and start talking about everybody did this, 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 this. So it kind of, People were really getting funny with that. And I was like, I never, I never used that me too thing. You know what I mean? So I respect it wholly. I, I respect it. And, but what I'm trying to say is sometimes real shit gets watered down when people. Of course. Okay. But, but, <laughs> but, but other, but other women's truths don't need to impact you. Do you know what I mean? Right, right, right. But I want to unite end. with them. Like I want to. But, but but unite with people that want to unite on your terms and your framework. Do you understand? Like, right. Listen, for example, a lot of people right now are just going crazy and are like, "Yo, Bella, you have to start a podcast." Oh my god! Like, listen, listen. You've got all all sorts of stuff inside of you. Clearly, a lot of a lot of stories, a lot of stuff. Like you, the more you get it out in public, the the more strength you're gonna have. You you know that whole story, and obviously you've been watching. Like uh, like you referenced it already. Like the whole thought of like helping one 16 year old girl. That's real shit. One person that would mean the world to me. One. Um, imagine imagine when you were 16, like you turned on MTV, and somebody like you said something that changed your mindset. Your whole life would be different. It it's. I'm telling you, because I had a dance career, like I danced all my life. That's why my family was so upset with, like they were, they were just so shitty to me. It was, it, it Listen, but there was you a know. Lot, there, they were, it sounds like your mom was shitty before it even started. Like there was a lot there, but the reality is the only thing that heals is exposing shadows. And you come Absolutely. from, and you come from a, you know, listen, I'm, I come from this framework too, which is like, you keep shit private. You don't snitch, you don't, da, 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 all that shit. Like, I, you yeah. know, it's, um, it's very obvious. I get it. But the reality is, is that especially if shit's out already, 
Well, then you're just, then you're healing yourself. That's not snitching, that's you healing yourself. I never, would, like I said, I never put his name out there. I never did anything like that because I'm like, not, I'm not gonna, it's, it's embarrassing. He's a bum, like what the fuck, you know? But you were 16. At the same we all were, you were 16, Bella. Yeah. It's not I embarrassing. And Bella. I wish I you were, knew you were the 16. stuff that I knew. You were 16, yeah. it's not embarrassing. Every fucking person in the comments and watching this right now did dumb shit at 16. Yeah, and they're all they're all amazing. Like I got on earlier, like in the very beginning, because I woke up at like four this morning because I was freaking out. And um, they, they're just so supportive. Like you have the best chat, you know why? Because when we're in there, we support each other. When somebody comes in and starts like talking shit or spamming, we, we don't, you know, we're not assholes to them. We just kind of, you can we don't play. Yourself. You're like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate you. Put out you. content. Keep telling your story. Okay. All right. Okay. And, and do I have to, um, and I've DM'd you for like months every day, the word <laughs> chances. I have. I'm glad you made it. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Man, a lot of stuff. You know, I hope that helps put people in perspective, right? Like there's just so many different things people deal with. And like, I always tell people like, you've got something heavy, somebody's got something heavier. And just like, I hope that, that I hope Bella helped you this morning, just put things in perspective. Some people really have some heavy shit. Let's keep it going. What is up, Gary V? What's I'm up, Tanya? How are you? So I'm <laughs> good. It. Put it in the This work. is my tea time right here. I love so, it. I have How a question. Things? things have been good. good. I feel like I'm stuck. Um, with everything going on, it's just, I feel like I'm not really creative with content right now. And so I wanted to ask you, how do I get more creative? Um, what would you be doing with your extra time? Would you be just trying to get content out? Would you be trying to learn something new? Like I've always been interested in day trading. So I'm like, should I just do a little bit of both? But do it, does that take focus from my online training business? Like, well, I, I think that you're clearly- I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. Well, I think Tanya, I think clearly, if you're asking the question, you do want to get distracted from your core thing. And I think both options that you threw out content and learning day trading both make sense. And I think all three, it, you know, being in play is a great idea. Like, I don't, are you putting, hey, don't spread yourself thin on a pedestal? Like, do you think like it's important to like, do you, do you, do you subscribe to the focus of like focus on one thing? Because for me, you know, and I've said it so often over these two months, like focusing on many things is my strength. It's what I like. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Cause that's always my biggest fear is like, I've done online trading for almost 10 years. So a lot of it is repetitive. Um, and I feel like I need something exciting and new and day trading. You, it's like you clearly do. You clearly yeah. do. You clearly so, do. Like, yeah, like, like if, if you're looking for affirmation or confirmation that your intuition's right here, like I'll give it to you. If, if okay. you, your vibes are very clear to me that you do, like you just need to do it, yeah. you know, because you need to see it through just to see yeah. if you like it. Like the tasting yeah. of it is so important. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I'll do that. And then how have you been able to like stay creative with content creation during this time? By being happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I mean, do you, I, you know what I mean? Like if you're not in a good yeah. place mentally, you know, then it's already, <clears throat> it's already difficult to go there. If you're not in a great quote unquote place, you know, yeah. then it's really hard for you to give. When, when, you're, when you're in a place where you need something, it's hard for you to be the one that's giving. For me, I don't need anything because all the stuff I've been talking about for a decade plays out in times like this because the reality is, is that, you know, if you keep life simple, you know, all of a sudden, it's just really, really, really easy to be in a good spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I am going through a lot, like whole custody battle and then everything got put on lockdown and it's like, I already work from home. So the only places I ever went was like gym, canning, fun and grocery store. 
<laughs> now it's like I can't do any of that. And um, <laughs> like I just work out at home, hang out with my baby, and like that's really it. So I'm like I've been trying to meditate, uh, doing more journaling, just to like tap in and really figure out like what do you want to talk about. And have since you, I've been have battling you, have, like, a lot have, with. Good. Since you've been battling a lot with. Oh, well, yeah, I was just saying, like, you know, I've been battling a lot with eating bad. So I've been, like, doing, like, full of shit Fridays, like, you know, telling everyone, like, yeah, I keep telling myself I'm going to do better with eating, but, like, haven't been able to do my intermittent fasting or stay away from ice cream or wine. <laughs> and so I think, I think, it's I like think, I've been trying to just be authentic. I think that's super powerful. I think beating yourself up, like, I... I've gained seven or eight pounds during this time, uh, and I mm -hmm. and I feel great about it because I've focused on muscle gain, and I know that in a couple months when I'm back to a routine where there's not food around the house all day, that I'll be able to get my shit together. I don't think I don't think you need to beat yourself up for a two to four month period where we had a global yeah. pandemic once in a kind of generation thing happen. This is not the time to be over devastated about your macros. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it's it's, good. A, it's about it's about judgment, right? Yeah. It's a it's it about it's about not judging yourself. It's like just really, really, really getting to that place, you know? Yeah. No, and that's so true. So thank you. You're welcome. And put, I think put, that just, was my last question. I, I think I think the one thing that might be able to help you, I would highly recommend going into an Instagram live and just talking to people. Bring people yeah. on, answer their question. I find a lot of times creativity comes from the the community. And so I think yeah. that, um, um, I think that is going to really be maybe a trigger for you. Okay. No, no, try that. that. And honestly, try I thought about that last night. So try that. Awesome. Well, I, awesome. Good luck. I will. All right. So, take care. Thank you. I appreciate you. Got it. Appreciate you. All right. Let's keep it going. <laughs> I like the uh, workout Q and a. How are you? How's it going? It's going well, brother. How are you? I'm good, fans. I'm good. I just want to start off by saying massive thank you, you know, to all the help you've given me. Like, you've helped me grow so much. I've only been watching your stuff for a few months, and honestly, you, you've changed my life completely. And, How'd you find it, Scott? Um, so I actually found it on YouTube. Um, I just saw your stuff. That's I saw one of your videos. Um, it was about, like, Instagram DM, and I just, I got hooked, and I started watching your videos. And, I, and the thing about me is I'm a very logical thinker, and so I had to kind of watch a lot of your stuff and then take a while to digest it and make sense of it myself, and then go off and apply it. And after Very going nice. off and applying it, you know, I've, I've seen some success, and it's, it's been great, so thank you. Um, what can I help so, you? Um, my question is, I know, um, you know you're very big on um, you know, producing like, you know, at least like sort of eight to 15 pieces of content a day. And so I'm, I'm a music artist, and I'm also a club promoter. And this is something that I'm like really struggling with. I'm really not too sure how to hit that number. I'm only doing like sort of four. Well, the, the the number Scott, the number is theoretical. I'd rather, I I I wish you could put out a hundred pieces of content a day. You know, and by the way, the more platforms you're on, the easier it is to put out content. And when you're on Twitter, where that content may be five or six thoughts that you just write out in written form, and not a fucking YouTube vlog, all of a sudden, that number becomes more obtainable. The numbers are arbitrary. The, I've thrown out eight, fifteen, four a day, thirty, a hundred, sixty-four. Those are those are just numbers that are kind of theoretical. Right. What, what I'm trying to do is get people to get into a comfort zone of understanding the more you're able to actually create and produce, the more likely something will happen. Something happens when you put something out. You know, like, yeah. uh, you know, I always think this all the time, the amount of artists, music artists that were meant or could have been one hit wonders or, or had a real career, but they cut one song out of their album when they put out their first ever album. Yeah. And that was the song that was destined to, to be a top hit. And yeah. then it never happened. Well, that sucks. But with the internet, that doesn't need to happen. Like, you know, everything should be put out. Right, right. And I know like you always talk about like context as well. Is that where that comes into play as well? Correct, because the way to win on platforms is understanding how TikTok works differently than LinkedIn, that works differently than Twitter. So the context of the platform a lot of times is going to be the variable of success. It's why I always say, watch what I do, not what I say. Like, why am I trying so many different formats on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter? Like, why am I doing that? I'm not doing that for my health. It's because I'm testing, trying different things. 
doing different things and those things lead to observations. Uh, you know, my latest content pillar on Instagram is these sketched, you know, kind of pictures of me with quotes and they're yeah. outperforming the ones that look like tweets. You know, if I didn't think of to do that, which came from an insight that I got from a wine text ad that me and Dwayne on my team created. So like, if you're not constantly in motion and trying, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find the thing that's gonna be your breakthrough if you keep doing the same shit. People hit me up all the time. They're like, Gary, I put out a thousand pieces of content. Like you said, it's not working. And then I go look at their Instagram and it's all the same kind of content. I'm like, the market told you a long time ago that they don't like that. Yeah. Okay, okay, I see. And what kind of a... Uh... What platforms would you would you recommend the most? All of them. But for an artist, you know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know, Snapchat, like, you know, Twitter, th like they're all in play. I see. And is it kind of like cuz I know you did your daily V and that was uh that was literally just like a whole day of you. Is it kind of like that just sort of split up into different parts across multiple platforms? I mean, that worked for me because after seven years of doing content myself, I was able to afford hiring somebody. And then once you hire somebody to film everything you're doing and you're a kind of person like me that's busy every fucking minute for 15 hours a day, that led to a lot of content. That's not the reality for a lot of people. Yeah. But, you know, filming you promoting a club or doing a show from coast to coast, like that's kind of interesting shit. So maybe, and by the way, I hired somebody and paid them, but a lot of people would do that for free because they just want to be close to that action. You know, when you're in music or you're in club promoting, like that's fun life. And there's a lot of people with a camera that are willing to fucking do it for free because yeah. they could never get that close to that, that coolness. And so there's just a lot of ways to, to attack it. I see, I see. Okay, well, thank you so much, Gary. That's really helped you're a welcome, lot. You're welcome, mate. I Listen, don't overthink, make. Okay, got it. You being that logical, you're gonna outthink yourself and in yeah, that thinking that was was the time to make, reverse it. Realize you'll have better thoughts if you learn from what's working and not working. I think a lot. I just make and then consume and then think. I don't have the audacity or ego to think I'm gonna figure it out myself before I put it out. I put it out and then learn from the reaction. That's how I think, that's the reverse. And I think you need to consider that. Right, so you're listening more. You're listening. And what that takes is humility. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you so, to, much, it, Thank you so much. You have to have the self confidence to not get the likes. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that, mate. Thank you. You're welcome, mate. Take care. Take it easy. All right. Let's keep it going. Gary, what's up? What's good, bro? What's your name? How's it going, Jake? Jake, real pleasure. Definitely, real pleasure. I got I got the mug life going on this I morning. I love that, bro. So. <laughs> is, that is that a Mario? Is that a it Mario is. It's, it's a Super Mario mug. Heck yeah. Hashtag mug life. I saw, I saw the quick, I saw the quick stones quick and I fucking knew. Right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so uh, I am uh, Jake. I have a YouTube channel um, and we do comedy sketches and stuff like that. Um, my biggest question um, to kind of piggyback off of Scott's question, um, a lot of what I've been doing recently is just kind of doing that, um, putting out, you know, as much as I can, good quality content, what I want to do, um, you know, what I know my audience is going to like. Um, it's helped grow my TikTok. Um, it's helped grow the YouTube a little bit. I've had the channel for seven years and I've seen the most growth in the past six months than I've seen ever. Um, it's not you much. Feel like, you, you feel like that? You feel like that's coming from TikTok over to YouTube? I think like it's it's coming from everywhere, yeah. From you know constantly posting on Facebook, Twitter, um, a lot of my analytics. Um, you know, I've been kind of working on the back end a little bit, not you know not obsessing over it, um, but a lot of you know the tips and tricks I'm doing are kind of helping me get in search and on the you know the front page and whatnot. Um, a couple times here and there, um, but my biggest thing is like if I'm going to be doing collaborations with people um, over time because I want to start reaching out and you know start to kind of network that. Um, it's crazy. I'm already seeing like subscribers. That's weird. Um, it's, uh, so doing that and collaborating with people and not overwhelming myself, um, is like the biggest thing for me. Cause I tend to like throw everything at the wall and then, um, you know, you get stuck in that reaction of like, okay, well this isn't working. This isn't working. You know, I've been getting better at just kind of pushing it all out regardless. Good. So I but guess something, something not working is good. Definitely. That's see. That's no, where no, I let's stay. Let's stay here, Jake. Like, if you don't have the expectation that this collab or this execution or this tactic is going to change everything, and you just like the fact that you're trying new shit, yeah. You know, like to me, that's the whole framework. Like, it's all lack. Like for me, uh, as I start doing this, I'm like, okay, right. That's why shit works for me. I have no expectations. Right. I get excited to learn. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then if something works, it's like gravy, but but I'm not hurt by the waste of time. So I think it's why I love garage sailing, right? Yeah. Like I, I can spend like five hours and if I don't find anything, it was the game that I liked, not the fact right. that like, fuck, I didn't find like a huge box of Super Nintendo games. You know yeah, I, mean? I, I used to work at a thrift store and I would do the, uh, a lot of the antique and cool junk stuff. Shout out to the, the Bridge Teen Center in Orland. Um, <laughs> It's it's uh it was literally like one of my favorite jobs and it was like just seeing all that stuff kind of got me inspired to to start you know like looking into that and collecting like vintage stuff and you know that's when I found you on YouTube and then I found out my dad's followed you for ten plus years I'm like oh my god like this is crazy and I'm like I gotta start getting into this guy and it was just when I started listening to that advice it started working and it just seems the more that I you know I'm reaching out with people and. And doing that, it's it's where that that overwhelming don't, like don't oh, don't too much, you know. No, you're not doing too much. You're doing too little. All right, okay, good to hear. I'm being serious. Yeah, you're not doing too much. You're doing too little. What this is like all I have. Like I literally, I I dropped out of college. I good. lost my job in retail management, good. and I'm never going back. Good. Like that's so that's been my so, motto. So. so the answer is you're doing too little. What right. You're do, what you're doing is you're you're doing too little, and you're judging yourself too much. Right. Yeah. I literally, I posted a thing on Reddit yesterday or like two days ago. I took your advice. I just screenshotted some tweets of mine that were motivational that were like, Hey, like pump up, like, you know, like fuck the noise. Who cares what everybody else says? Do what you want to do. That makes you happy. And like within two nights, it's like each of them, it's like at a hundred likes, hundred upvotes each. It's like, it's slowly starting. I'm seeing a couple of Twitter followers come in, you know, Reddit, so Reddit is an crazy. amazing community. Yeah. Man, I would have never thought, you know, I, I saw that old pamphlet. It. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's a, you're doing too little and you're judging too much is, is the mantra to so many people. Right. Like, like, I mean, I've know, heard you say it a million times. It's yeah. <laughs> but, but, but in the way I'm saying it now, it even hits for me. Like I haven't said it exactly like that. Like I haven't said, you're doing too little. Like I, I've macro said it, but right, in the specific, right, right. no, you like, like if you have a dream to stand on your own two feet and fucking like live this life based on what oh, yeah. you want to do, you're never doing enough. It's that you're never doing enough, but your mind has to tell you that that's, that you're not beating yourself up for not doing enough. It's okay. Like it's, it's about self love and heavy execution. Okay. You're not stretched in. You wouldn't have, like everybody's worried. Like, oh damn, if I just focused on one platform, but they all intertwine. Things right. you learn on TikTok are going to help you on YouTube. Something you do on YouTube comments helps you on Twitter. It's it's right. more complex than that. Um, and so it's about the lack of judgment and not being crippled by having too many things in the air. Okay. See, that's because that's the biggest thing for me is is like I look at it way too. I think maybe way too literal. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, even, okay, if I'm spinning like, out all these ideas, I have to execute, you know? And it's just, yeah. Even, even the way you set up, like I'm looking at my analytics, but not too much. Like, bro, I've been in it. This like secretly. Years. Yeah. I Ready for this? <laughs> exactly. Bro, you're not gonna believe this. 12 years. I don't think I've spent 20 minutes on analytics. I have oh. no fucking idea. Right. Right. By the way, but I could be better. I, but I knowing that makes me know that I don't have as much juice on YouTube as I could. Cause that's a right, very right. analytical game. I don't give a fuck. They, well, and a lot of the people I'm following, is saying, exactly, exactly. They're saying if you're going to be worried about that, you're worrying too much about you know what people that aren't following you want. So, hundred percent, you have to create. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to do. I want to inspire people to create and love. So, I appreciate it, bro. Definitely. Take care, Jake. Yeah. Stay Peace well. Bye bye. Bye. Big shout out to the comments. Dog hustle. What is good behind the lens? Great to see you, uh, Zach Drew. Good to see you. Lucas C, good to see you. Dusty Buff 44, what's good? The Sony Vega, great to have you here. Jara, thank you for being here. Josh Andrews, I appreciate you. Uh, really, really glad you're here. Crazy Caleb, what's good? Janine Bernard, hi, hi, hi. All right, let's keep going. Gary V. Trav, getting getting in that uh, H2O. Getting that uh, a gallon a day, man. Listen, so the I know wrestling ship to... behind you is incredible. What's that? The wrestling ship behind you is insane. Bro, bro, I painted that mural. I know you'd like it. Holy fuck, dude. That's amazing. Thank you, bro. So I know I have limited time, but I just want to thank you so much for this. I like in advance, uh, just everything you're going to say. And like, <laughs> I appreciate you so much. So um, a really quick backstory. Um, so my question makes sense. So I'm a creative. I've been painting since I was three years old. I do murals, video, graphic design. I have a portrait website that I sell my prints. And I've been a barber full time for 15 years. 
which I decided to quit this week. Wow. So my wife is also an artist and we painted murals on every wall in our house. Like I'm in my, I'm in my home office right now. And um, so I've been watching you since about 2014 ish. I love your content because I was born and raised in Jersey. I was the kid in the neighborhood with the lemonade stand selling video games. I had a booming bootleg CD business <laughs> in high school. I was killing it. I go to Chinatown, get all the stuff before it comes out. So then 2003, I moved to Florida for college because I had no clue what I was doing with my life. What and part in Jersey did you grow up in? I was at uh, Passaic County. Love it. What town? Uh, West Milford. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, so uh, I started barbering in the hallways in college um, to make money as a college kid. So I got a lot of clientele and I opened up my own barbershop on the campus while having my own custom t-shirt business with like my artwork on it. And then I started making YouTube videos in 2009. And this is where my question comes in. I started doing that for fun well, with my friend at the time. And I taught myself how to film and edit. And he would rap about 90s cartoons and I would paint whatever he rapped about. So we had over 150 videos on YouTube. We started getting some traction. I, had, I would do like five foot paintings for huge YouTubers of their favorite cartoons or whatever they're into. I'd try and build relationships and I'd spend like $200 for shipping and send it to them as a surprise to their PO box. And they would open it on camera in awe and shout me out to their millions of subscribers. And my inbox would explode. I'd get you know more subscribers. And, and it, it still works today because like a couple months ago, I did a drawing of Ric Flair and he ripped it off my Instagram, posted it on all his social medias and start, you know, and, and shouted me out. So I was like, woo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, so we got up to 44,000 subscribers. We got millions of views on the channel and then brands started reaching out. So I was on the tonight show with Jay Leno. I worked with Ford, Jolly Rancher, uh, met Rob Deerdeck, um, and a bunch of celebrities. And, uh, my goal was always to have a, a show on MTV. So eventually MTV reached out to do a reality show about my artwork. I quit barbering the day I got the phone call. We filmed for three months, they edited it, and then they shelved the show. And I became good friends with my cameraman and he said there wasn't enough drama because I'm a clean cut guy, so they didn't air it. And let me, um, and I let my YouTube channel go at that time because I was too busy filming the MTV show and I just hit rock bottom when MTV didn't work out because that was my ultimate goal and I felt like a failure. Like looking back, I don't know why I let that break me because MTV is, is trash anyway. Um, and, and it's just like at that time I felt like, like an idiot. So I deleted all my social media and disappeared wow. from the internet. Wow. I was young, dumb, and embarrassed. So, when like, was, when was this? Th uh, so, so this was the the show was supposed to air in 2014. Okay, keep going. So, so, um, so, but, but at the same time, I also realized that I didn't want to pursue being famous. I, it wasn't ever truly fulfilling for me. And when you hang out with celebrities and people think you made it, like, it doesn't create true, lasting happiness. So, I got a good taste of the Hollywood life without truly being famous. So I went back to barbering and started an art business uh, on the side doing portraits and I sell prints. I'm not selling this because I, I feel weird selling pictures of you um, <laughs> because now I know you and, and I just, I would never do that without your permission. Um, but I- You can yeah. sell it. Man, that's awesome, thanks. Approved. <laughs> All right, you're, you're the man. So, uh, but, um, yeah, so, so I started barbering again. I started a wood sign business and we started making custom arcade machines. I bought like $40,000 worth of equipment once it started picking up. The shop burnt down, a freak accident, literally burnt to the ground and I never rebuilt it because I just, I just said, you know what, heck with it. Let me, let me get back into video because that itch never went away. So I, recently I said enough is enough. I'm quitting my job, I'm gonna die. I need to live my life and I wanna do video full time. So I dumped all my savings into a bunch of new gear. And like I said, decided to quit barring again this week. So I'm not necessarily trying to become a uh, you know, social media influencer and pursue fame, but, but I've been getting a bunch of jobs doing commercials for brands where they give me creative freedom, I do my thing. And like, I'm happy with my life, bro. I really love it. Like I, I love you. number I one. I can feel I it, I can feel it. 
Yeah, that like that's what gives me life is God. I love it. You're, like, also, you're also wildly talented. I I appreciate that. Which uh, means you're self sufficient. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And how but the old thing are you is, right now? I'm I'm thirty, going to be thirty five actually. I know I look like I'm fourteen, but uh, you know I still got time. I know I do. Yeah, um, don't 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 apologize for being handsome. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, it's it's funny. I, I I'll get into this real quick but but somebody was like man you look like you could you could be related to Gary V. I was like <laughs> ah. I had I had a little more of a beard when they said that I but I get it. I get it. Go ahead. You know, I'm a Guido from 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 New Jersey. I mean I, I know I you're it. Russian but you I know love it. Same, shit. Same shit. Yeah. So um but I've never been into you know Bentleys or mansions. I hate that crap. Like I have no desire for it. I want freedom to impact people's lives though. So my struggle is I don't care about attention anymore. But I understand you need it to impact more people and make so more good. money. So good. Uh, bro, I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm not fucking out here trying to get a star on the Walk of Fame. I'm not out here trying to get a private jet or live that life. I'm trying to gain attention so I can right. do what I want to do with it, which right. is put kindness and hard work and good traits, uh, you know, especially for young men, but for every single human. Um, you know, I mean, like good, like just because you want to have followers doesn't mean having followers comes in two forms, people that do it for themselves and people that do it for others. Like yeah. there's a, gr there's a great way to fucking, you know, have 10 million followers. You could, you know, you know, Martin Luther King and Gandhi like did something different with their followers than Madonna did. And neither right. are wrong or right. It's right. just, there's a lot of ways to do it. So right. don't don't apologize for looking for that quote unquote fame because it's what you do with it, not it itself. Right, I agree. So um, so besides the video thing though, like I, I also, you know, I wanted to start making like, or, or I've, I've done it already, I just haven't launched it yet. I wanna make like video transitions, overlays and effects to sell to filmmakers because that's the main way I see financial freedom from the video side. I, I don't I don't agree with you. I think the main okay. way to have financial well, first of all, do that. Yes. Well, but, but what I'm I, saying is, But oh. I think your financial freedom comes, dude, you could sell you could sell three hundred thousand dollars a year in art. Easy. Right, right. Well, well, I what I what I'm saying is I know a guy who does video. He makes a hundred grand a year doing video. He started selling his his transitions and effects, and he made a million in one year. So do that. If that. you're excited yeah. about it. Yeah. But is that, is that million a year going to make you happier than doing 480 doing paintings? Well, I mean, either either way, like I'm happy with video and art and I, I'm, I'm having a right. hard time. So, so no, do both until do you both. figure out which one you like. Right. It's like dating. You know, some people right. like live that life where they date until they find the person they want to marry. Like right. it's okay to do both. Right. You got right. nothing but time now. You're not cutting hair, so you got fucking time. Do both. Well, you know it's crazy. The the MTV show they it was really guy heavy, and they had me have a fake girlfriend um, because they they needed it for the storyline. Bro, that's when you should have fucking quit that shit. No, 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 no. But but but, but listen to this though. So you I fell in love with the girl. My church, who was an artist, like, hey, can you just be my fake girlfriend on TV, bro? After the show ends, I end up falling in love with her, and we get married. <laughs> Hold on. Yes, I know. My fake TV girlfriend became my wife, bro. Fuck you, Trav. I, I know. And and literally, bro, our whole house looks like this. Bro, that's a keeper. Crazy. So, dude, so the how could have you been upset with the MTV show? No, no. What, no, 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 stay with me, Trav. You fucking are mad at this MTV show when it was the greatest thing that ever fucking happened to you. At the time, I was mad at it, but then after we started dating, then I was like, oh, screw it. I'm fine. <laughs> Dude, that is some, bro, honestly, crazy. like, cra cra bro. You, have, you have things burning down. You have fake girlfriends becoming Gary. wives. Bro, you Gary, fucking won, Gary. dude. You Gary, fucking won. My, my, Gary, my whole life is so God ordained, it's not even funny. <laughs> Listen to this. I made a video last week of how I met you, okay? I was trying to be creative during quarantine and I faked an interview interview with you in your office, but the message of the video was don't fake it till you make it. And it confused a lot of people because it looked so real, even though at the end I said I don't know you. 
Then a week later, I'm talking to you for real. So people are probably going to be confused again and not believe this. Well, it was funny. We were fucking, as you were talking, some people in the comments were like, yo, this dude's met Gary already. <laughs> and, I'm like, damn. and I'm like, damn, usually I'm good with fucking, like, you know, remembering shit. I was like sitting here thinking like, man, I really don't remember. So that, that just made me happy because I thought I was starting to fucking lose it. Right, Trap, listen, yeah, yeah, Trap, no. Trap, you have so much good. You have, bro, you have so much good coming out of your soul. You have so much good stuff. Just put out content, bro. How serious are you about TikTok right now? Okay, so so when you first started talking about TikTok, I got on it and I, and I fell off, bro. Straight up honest. I know. I No, no, no. I know. I know. I just, I literally dropped the ball. I got Dude, really- It's good such commercial. a good spot. Dude, it's such a good spot for you. I You're know. such a good energy for the 16-year-olds too. Like the whole thing is so obvious to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, can I ask you a question? Can you, can you watch that video of me and you having the, the interview yes. in your office and let yes. me know? What, Dustin, what do I think? If you tricked fucking people to think it was real, no, it's, it's going to be fucking so amazing. Real. I created yes. a storyline. I was ripping footage of when you were talking about Travis from Uber. I mean, it's hilarious. All right. I will. Dustin, make sure I, I watch it this week. Put it into the team thread. You got that, Dustin? Um, and then yep. last I was looking it up right now. Okay. Dust, don't you love Trav? Like, don't you like desperately want to be his friend? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I hit Dustin up on on um on Instagram, and I bugged the crap out of him trying to get that video to you, trying to get on the show. And Dustin, I love you. Um, Dustin, are you getting bombarded now? Like, is your whole like? Of course he you're is. Just in, like, yeah. you're just getting killed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Dustin, oh, you getting you getting yeah. inappropriate yeah. offers like money and shit? No. I offered him a Ninja Turtle painting. He did. I remember that. <laughs> that was cool. Right. Get out of here, Dustin. <laughs> hey, right. so so I know I got to wrap up because you're running low yep. on time, yep. but I really listened to your advice. And, and you know, I've been driving the same car for 14 years. My wife's car is paid off. We live in the redneck ghetto on an acre and a half because our mortgage is only five fifty a month. I'm setting myself up for the, for the Gary V, you know, future type of thing. And uh, I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. So thank you for confirming you know, my behavior. And, and I know I'm going to make it. And I, I just you I, you have know. made it. It's not even about making it, bro. You have made it. Yeah. Like, like you've lived a more interesting life at 34 than 90% of people live to a hundred and you've got yeah, talent yeah. and you've got good vibes. You're, you're good, bro. You're you good. Know, you know, it, it's funny because everything I've ever set out to do, you know, it's happened. Like I, I've met every celebrity I've ever wanted to meet. I did the MTV thing, which they actually aired it last year, which is so weird because someone took a snapshot and were like, you're on TV. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that, but whatever. But so anything I've ever set out to do, it happens. And, and I wanted to meet you and we're talking right now, bro. And it's just crazy. And, you know, before I sign off, I just want to tell you this, man, because I really feel like this is on my heart. But, you know, I want to tell you this, man. My my Bible tells me to give honor where honor is due. And you you have a God-given talent for motivating people and having an impact through your content. And like I truly believe we met for a reason. And I want to tell you, man, I believe God has an even bigger message inside of you that's going to impact more people than you already are, which is I agree. And 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 you're going to continue to excel no matter what. But I'm telling you right now. I'm literally on my knees. I'm going to be praying for you every day and God is going to move in your life and you're going to call me because you got my number now. <laughs> Dude, some amazing supernatural things are happening behind the scenes since our talk. What the heck are you praying over there? Keep and this going, bro. is going to affect people's eternities, not just legacy here on earth. And I'm rooting for you, bro. Thank I you, love man. you, man. And I can't I thank you too. for this time with you. Seriously. I appreciate it, man. I wish Seriously. you well. Talk to you soon. Thank, thank you, Gary. Good kid. All right, let's keep going. I like the Jersey good vibes. That was a nice kid. All right, let's keep going, Dust. <laughs> hey, Gary, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm focused and never finished. Good. I like that. What's your name? <laughs> My name's Rob. Rob, real pleasure. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of context. Um, so I live in a really small town here in the Silicon Valley uh, called Milpitas, which is right in front of San Jose. And if you know anything about the Silicon Valley, it has like a really hardcore uh, startup culture, right? Yes. And so 
me, I've always had a sort of entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, the only thing that I really want to do in life, I mean, nobody could really uh, convince me otherwise. I want to make movies. Like, that's the okay. only thing. That's the only shit that really, truly makes me happy. Okay. But here's, but the thing with me is that I'm having a hard time having the discipline and having the accountability um, to really just go for it and really Why? just. <sighs> what are you scared of? And what what are the circumstances of your childhood? Are you like, like? what 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 stopping you like if you like get real fucking real with me what do you, like really tell me the answer, actual answer because you know it's just hard to say out loud yeah I, i'm i'm actually completely fine with saying it i've said it like before okay. on my instagram okay. where so? um i think it was about about a year ago i had uh i was really really passionate about making this short film it was part of uh, my graduation requirements um and we we had to make a just a short you know 10 minute film yep. and so i made it and all hell broke loose i was super passionate super you know on top of shit and everything just was like just like the editor the editing was bad i didn't really like the camera angles we got everybody's time schedules was just so constrained to the point where we weren't even able to finish we had to cut out probably like 80% of the story. You know what I mean? And it so just, it, that, didn't, it, it didn't go well. Didn't pan out. Yep. That's good. <sighs> yep. Dude, that's good. I, um, uh, stay with me here. That's good. Adversity is always the foundation of success. You needed that punch in the face because you probably came in too hot and thought you were fucking Steven Spielberg and this was gonna be fucking amazing. <laughs> like you probably came in too hot. You probably came in too audacious, you know, too entitled, too competent, overconfident, had an ideology in your head. You might've even at this young of an age, not done right as a leader and mm -hmm. might've not known how to lead the people to success. You might've taken the framework of they're working for you instead of you're working for them because you've had this dream, this ambition, this has been manifesting in your head. So there's almost like this entitled subconscious that comes into that, that those people there, the editors, the film are like, right, that they're there for you, right. where yeah. in reality for real success, you're there for them. Yeah. And so, I don't know, I'm excited. I'm like, I'm grateful that this was such a fuck up because you're so young. And I think it led to a self-reflecting moment. You've already shared that out to the world on your Instagram, here you and I are now. I'm proud of you. You need to view that as what you deserved. You weren't good. That's why it sucked. That's on you. But that's great, because then you get to look at what you weren't good at. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I totally agree with you. And, you know, I've worked with this uh, 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 nonprofit chapter. I opened it on campus and everything. And so I had this leading ability, which allowed me. And look, I mean, I've, I, I mean, I've been pretty vocal about this. I fucked up like, probably, like way more than a lot of people do. Um, <laughs> and I real, and just realizing that I'm young and realizing that I'm like, you know, only 22 years old, and you know, I you're, have, suppo you're supposed to fuck up. Yeah. Like, like nobody came out the like like nobody comes out the gate, like I had the great fortune that I made my fucked up mistakes when I was a kid, right? Like, like uh, you know, I think back to this story where I had $1,000 um, very early in my baseball card career. And my mom, I begged my mom to take me to Price Club, which was the precursor to Costco. And we got there and the boxes I wanted to buy weren't there. But instead of being disciplined, and not having the money burn a hole in my pocket and just keep it and be patient. This is me at 13. I went on a spree and bought a ton of bad cards. Spent like almost all the money on these bad cards, bad football cards, bad baseball cards, took them home, opened it up, got that high, loved it. It was like almost the lottery, but then I had nothing. I had nothing of value. And I had to grind all of eighth grade, like making good trades, selling shit, to like get back to even that point mm -hmm. where I had that money 
And that taught me a great lesson. I had the luxury of learning a lot of my business lessons. You know, we don't talk about business kid prodigies, but you know, if that was a thing, I would have been one of those. I learned a lot of things at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now I'm 44, but I'm like 100 because I've been in my game for fucking 37 years, which most people don't get into their game until their mid 20s and then they're retiring. I'm in my prime. I'm in the begin- I'm in the dawn of my prime. My prime is probably in my 60s. So I-, I think this is great that you fucking had this huge L because I think it 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 is starting to instill more humility into you, which is going to be a balance that you're going to need to be a great movie maker. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you think um, I should have that accountability moving forward? Because I totally realize that. And especially after talking to you, it's just like now I'm writing, you know, this feature film that I'm uh, doing and uh, pretty much really starting to get the ball rolling again. So how do I have the accountability? And shit like that? First and foremost, you have to realize that it's it was 100 percent your fault that that failed and that you don't want that to happen again. <laughs> you know, like, like you don't want that to happen. So I think one, that should help you. Two, you should also be okay when this one gets fucked up because maybe you were at 10 audacity and maybe as you sit here with me, you're still at seven and you may need another punch in the fucking neck to go to four. Like, you know, like it's still a process, but what the number one thing I can tell you, brother, is if you're a leader, you work for them, they don't work for you. That's, it's a huge factor. And I see it a ton in creatives getting fucked up and getting confused. Right. It's a huge factor. You work yeah. for them. So A, you have to tell a great story. But to see that story come into real life, you're going to need to be the number two to your editor, number two to the intern getting coffee for the actors. You're the, like always playing the humble card. And I always believe that that works out in the end. I genuinely do. And so you have to be accountable and humble going into this, knowing that that was your vulnerability the first time around. And it's practice. Uh, yeah. it's, practice. Totally. it's about, it's about confidence. You know, you know, who's, you know, who are the dick directors and the asshole bosses, the insecure. Yeah. They need the short term fix. Like they're the boss. But they're so they win the battle, like yay, they belittled somebody, they can feel better for a quick hit. But meanwhile, everyone's talking shit behind their back and they're not liked and their legacy's fucked. Yeah. Uh, this is about well, confidence. Go ahead. One last thing that I want to ask you before uh, we kind of cut it off. Um, so if you were Gary V, uh, and you instead of Gary V, uh, the media guy, you were Gary V, the movie guy. And this is your first film out of film school. And you really, you really want to get this film out there. What is, what is, what is your game plan for that? So it's interesting, right? Cause Gary, I, I'm going to be Gary V, the video, the movie guy and the TV guy. Like I'm going to make original content in my career. My, my approach to that was to build a marketing engine, VaynerMedia, that could be, bring exposure to every one of my projects when the time is right. So I, I'm living what you're saying. I just decided to take a 30 year, 40 year approach to it because my passion was building the marketing engine and then layering it. For you, your passion is the movie. I, you know, here's what I would say. I would build a community. I would, you know, if I'm you, I would network like crazy. I would join a ton of Facebook groups. I would, I would, I would start a bunch of Instagram accounts. I would comment on people's YouTube. I would do a ton of homework on who's winning in Hollywood and New York and start DMing them and offer to be an intern. I would lean into humility and patience and work ethic to build a community okay. to then to then leverage to bring exposure to when that film is out. But let me tell you the biggest thing I've learned kind of spending time in Hollywood over the last five years, kind of paying attention. Movie marketing is garbage. People are really bad at marketing movies. Oh, you know, yeah. really bad at it. They do not use the modern platforms. And so, you know, I, listen, my, my game is very simple. Whether you're trying to cure Crohn's disease or whether you're trying to raise money for the PTA or whether you're trying to help one 16 year old girl who's on the verge of making tough decisions, I believe that the internet is the most powerful medium to reach people. And I think whatever sites or apps are winning on top of the internet at the moment, whether that's podcast or YouTube, whether that's TikTok or LinkedIn, 
being a storyteller within all those platforms matters. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll give you an example. It's about creativity. One thing I would do if I was writing a movie, I would probably start an account of the lead character in that film two years before the film came. As you're writing the story, and we create a character named Benjamin Thompson, I would literally create an Instagram account for Benjamin Thompson. Find some artist like the one I just had on, you know, on social media and literally, literally DM like 50 artists and be like, hey, if you create this character with me and do all the drawings in the comic strip or the pictures or whatever, you know, when I make my movie, I'll give you a half a 0.05% of the back end if it ever takes like just being creative, just being thoughtful. Like, and God forbid that 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 Instagram account gets a little traction, it leads to a narrative when the film comes out. Like, so there's just a lot of creative ways to do shit. The bottom line though is, and it's so obvious to me, brother, this is a game of patience and putting in the work. Like, you know, when you're an aspiring, you know, filmmaker, you dream every day. It's in your soul for the, you to have your breakout film. You watch the fucking Oscars and you see highlight and, you, and you're like, that's gonna be, you see a breakthrough, you know what I mean? Like I get it, but like the reality is it takes a lot of grinding time, a lot. Yeah, I mean, the only luxury we have is time, right? Yeah, and then other people will be like, time is fleeting and you never know, and I get all that, but like the reality is whether you think we have a ton of time or no time, whichever one you believe in, I can promise you this, the fucking hard work is the cost of entry. You either have such extreme God-given talent that the first thing you write pops off on some Matt Damon you know, and Ben Affleck shit, right? Or you're like the 99% and you put in the fucking two decades and then your moment comes. Yeah. Take it from a 44-year-old who's twice your age. If I told you right now, you have to put in 22 years of grinding, but at 44, you hit, you would fucking rip your arm off for that opportunity. Yet, when you're 22, that sounds like the worst. Yeah, it does sound, it sounds so far away, but that's what it takes, right? It, it definitely is normally a foundational piece of the required way to get there. But, but here's my thing being a filmmaker that is commercially successful enough to live your life is such a lottery ticket, it should be hard. I keep reminding all my friends and and youngsters and this community, it's like, wait a minute, so let me get this straight. You wanna be a millionaire? You know, less than a 1% of 1% kind of life? Shouldn't that be hard? Shouldn't that take a long time? Shouldn't it be really difficult, you know? Right. You know, like, like, shouldn't that require enormous amounts of time? Shouldn't that like be a process? Like, I, you know, I, I'm always trying to get people to understand what they're actually asking for. Are you out of your mind? There's, there's only so many filmmakers in the world. You want to live that life? Cool. But of course, it should be fucking bleeding out of your eyeballs. Of course, there should be unlimited roadblocks. Of course, this should be hard. Yeah, I see what you mean. Bro. All right, Gary. Yeah. Good luck, bro. Uh, one last, one last thing. Uh, can I just uh, grab this clip? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good work All with right. Dustin. All right. Awesome. Let's get Thank one you more so much. Dustin. You got it. Bye-bye. Danny. Hey, Gary. How are you? I'm amazing. This is amazing. Thank you so much for this. Can you hold on one second? Just... Yep, you got it. Can you hold on one second? Hey, Dustin? Yep. Are you personally gonna apologize to Sarah who thought she had a hundredth of a second moment? Sorry, I'm sorry Sarah, I, I clicked. So this is like, you know, it's clearly, it's clearly, she's not gonna get in today. You gave her a hundredth of a second of hope, but then you took it away like the Grim Reaper. Are but you gonna personally be, apologize? But, but on the hindsight, she'll be first tomorrow. <laughs> get out of here, Danny. Yeah, not gonna lie, I had a mini freak out. I was like, oh! Oh no, <laughs> but no, um, thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, and I'll try and be brief, um, you know, and just as someone who feeds off the inspiration of others, certainly you are someone that is endless source of inspiration to me. So thank you for that. 
Yeah, um, yeah. So Thank just you. quickly, um, a little backstory. So I am originally from St. Louis, but um, I'm a musician and com a drummer composer. Um, that's been my whole life since my earliest memories of being alive. Um, and that's all I've ever really wanted to do with my life. Um, and so I moved to the city, New York City, for college uh, and studied music. Um, and that's just always been my whole life. It's my biggest passion. Never been a question about that. Um, and so recently I started making these short clips for Instagram where I would compose a bass line and I would improvise on drums over that. Um, and so without trying to be too technical here, um, a lot of the <laughs> concepts that I worked with in college were just very advanced technical music concepts, um, specifically advanced rhythms and things like that. So some of the stuff that you know, my community was working on a lot and sort of studying a lot is not as, I don't want to say accessible, but it's not as known to- Makes uh, sense. Yeah, right. To this, is super cliche, this is super cliche. You know, yep. as you were talking, I'm like, this reminds me of the wine world. You know, the, everybody is so nerdy and gets so fucking deep that they made wine not accessible to Americans. And what I did with Wine Library TV was made wine accessible for the youth and the Americans in general, and that's why it worked. Because to your point, you know, you out nerded the field, and they couldn't understand the value even if they heard it. Right. Well, and I mean, I think that's kind of where this little niche for me came in because I started making these clips, and you know, they were. I mean, I was doing them because I was like, okay, this is something I like to do, and it also kind of showcases. Um, my musical influences and the direction I'm going, um, but it's also just a form of content that people might find engaging. Um, cool. And so it was working really well on Instagram. So I started putting it in these Facebook groups, um, and they're you know these like subgenres that sort of relate to the kind of music that I work on. And they really took off there. So I started putting them in Reddit, and then they really took off there. And then COVID happened. And so I'm like, okay, I've been meaning to start a YouTube channel for a while now of this kind Good. of content. And like, you know, I mean, I actually had the channel for a while and didn't really do anything with it and just was hard to, I, I just didn't prioritize it enough. And so basically my question is more or less, um, you know, this channel, there's a lot of music channels out there, a lot of drum lessons, things like that. This stuff is but there's no da but there's catered. no but but there's no danny youtube channel right exactly exactly and i think the part end. of it is that this stuff's the, kind of weird yeah the end mm -hmm. like like you know there's there's an ungodly amount of content in every genre there's unlimited people that talk about mindset and business stuff like me there's unlimited people that do wine content there's unlimited everything there's no nobody's making up anything new the only very, very thing, true. The only new or unique thing is the human behind it. Hundred percent, hundred percent agree, and that's kind of part of the thing that helped me be very motivated about it. Is I'm like, well, I'm kind of a you know specific character, and like maybe you know the combination of the music and just whatever other attributes are in these clips, it's going to be something people resonate with, and then it that kind of was bolstered by those things doing well on Facebook and Reddit and stuff. I so, love that. so, and you know, career wise, I make all my money off of playing or teaching. And I love, I love both. That. Um, and so that was, it was kind of a win-win. I'm like, well, I start this channel and then that will bring attention to me as a teacher and also as a performer, et cetera. So my general question is, you know, finding the niche that I resonate with was easy on Reddit and on Instagram and Facebook just because it's very clear cut, like, oh, go here, post right here, and all the people that are into this will check it out. With YouTube, I feel like the day that I started the channel and told my people to come over to it, they did. And, you know, like overnight, I might have gotten 50 or 60 people. Now I've got maybe about 130 subscribers, but I'm trying to figure out how to reach like I, this niche is you're, 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 small, you're, you're, but not the smallest. They're gonna the, do it by your titles and descriptions. People are gonna search. The end. 
Yeah, I'm. That's what I'm working on, and I'm constantly. I don't. I. I, I, I think. It. I think what you're. What you need to work on is being okay with slow growth when you had quick growth in the other platforms. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, YouTube clearly does not work the same way. Um, and, and I do, I, I'm constantly watching these videos. And on where, how to where are you, where, where are you on TikTok? Because I know you didn't have the audacity to come on this show and not have your TikTok ready. So, so, okay. So initially I started a TikTok for my band, Horse Torso. And then <laughs> you like that? Yeah, my wife yeah, I like that name. That name. Um, Love that name. And, uh, so initially I was posting there. Um, and then I started this other channel um but so i i i watched a lot of tiktok tried to kind of figure out how to cater to Integrate. it i was posting the same i was posting basically the same content i had been posting on the other platforms and it just wasn't taking off on tiktok so admittedly briefly i paused tiktok but then i set up another tiktok that's for my specific channel it's got the same name as my youtube channel Udiments. Good. um and what is that uh, spell that so people so, can follow it's Y O U D I M E N T S. So it's like rudiments. So in drumming, there's a thing called rudiments, which are patterns that drummers practice to, uh, you know, get their technique together. So this is so the concept of rudiments is basically like my take is that a thing we really weren't taught in school is that not only should you learn all these things that were set by, you know, the history of of playing music but we should also be examining what we do naturally well and the things that work well for us. And we should be doubling down on practicing Love. what works for us in addition to studying all the patterns that are within Love. the tradition of drumming. I like um, it. Thanks. Um, so yeah, so, uh, and, and I did get that URL. So it's, yeah, exactly. It's uh, uh, YouTube backslash Udiments. Um, and now I'm getting notifications already. Um, so, so yeah, so basically the thing with TikTok is I feel like I haven't mastered the format because for, for Reddit there's only, and Facebook, there's only one, things, I'm able to there's only the one way to, stuff. there's only one way to master the format. It was the same way that you mastered your drum skill. You have to fucking practice. And the only reason yeah. you're giving up is it's not coming as quickly as you'd like it to. Hundred percent, and I've only been doing it for I don't know six weeks or something with the YouTube channel. Um, you know, and it's and like six I get good six weeks TikTok. into YouTube, a couple weeks into TikTok, and you're not where you theoretically wish you were from a number standpoint, and you fucking bounce. Right, right. No, I mean you're right. It's 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 if anything, I know I'm right. I'm I know I'm right. Yeah, and I and, um, and I know that and I know that you understand it because you would have never been great at what you do if you didn't put an obnoxious amount of work and six months in have a breakthrough and two years in have a breakthrough and four years in have a breakthrough. Um, for your genre, TikTok and YouTube really fucking matter, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying my hand at TikTok again and I won't let up until, until I see some growth. Um, or and or I might until, no, no, you won't let up until you, it's not about seeing growth. It's about loving the process, not the numbers. I it's promise true, you, a, I promise you the single most awareness post of your career will happen on TikTok in the next six months. I promise. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, you were my inspiration to start it in the first place. I had, I don't think I had even heard of it until you mentioned it. Um, and, and yeah, and, you know, and I do, that's the thing is that I really do enjoy the process of making the content and making, you know, like all of like for YouTube and for the other platforms. Um, and it is a win-win for me because it's like, I want to just bring awareness, like I said to myself as a drum instructor. Um, and it, you know, I got it. Crazy you got, time, bro, you, you've got everything right. You just need to make more content. hundred percent. hundred percent. I, well, I fully agree. Thanks so much, Gary. Again, it really it, means a lot to you spend the time with me. Thank you. Take care. All right, you Dustin, too. good good show, right? Like just kind of like a solid right down the pike mm -hmm. kind of show. I'm going to now hang up and write today's wine text because it is the single best Pinot Noir we've ever offered. And uh, and I want you guys to sign up for my podcast and my new Twitter channel, Gary B T Gary B T V.
Gary B E E T V. And thank you for watching. And I appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow. And the people that are gonna win over the next five to seven years are gonna be very comfortable in controlled fucking chaos. You don't love the process. This is dreams we're talking about. Dreams require sacrifice. All of your actions have to then map to it. Backpack, backpack, backpack. Nobody gives a shit about where you grew up. The whole game is scaling the unscalable. It's fucking hard work, it's being respectful, it's being a good person. Do that, that's just a good idea. It's there, the flip game's there. This house right here, there's $400 to be made. I stay in my lane, like real fucking tight. But you can't be crippled. Everybody here is judging themselves. You're looking at what's in front of you right now. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's fucking glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. Let me just say it one more time if you're confused what I just said. I say put your fucking flag on the ground of who the fuck you are. Whoever provides the most value always wins. You're entering the greatest five year window of your life. My only answer to Nate or anybody like is just like try shit. Shut your business down and go work for an apparel company for three years. Nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. So you better get your speed up. You better work harder. You better work smarter. If you can't Google stuff, you're not gonna be able to do anything that I'm telling you to do. Gary GTV, my new account. Check me out. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>